Hello everyone, I'm D-Mind, the mind of one and all, and welcome back to another episode of An Octave Higher. Alright, so in the last episode, we set up, well, Frederick and the gang basic, basically set up a trap for France, or Ar Armadillas. And yeah, then we got into a battle with Jisang, and then at least got injured, but Frederick, as I call from the beginning, would have used his compassion magic to save her. Well, I actually didn't, didn't call that, but I kind of guessed that at one point, Frederick would have to use his compassion magic. Alright. But it doesn't matter, because I finally get to see her smile. I'm five years late, but I finally was able to make Elise happy. If only for a little bit. Oh yeah. You poor chap, Frederick. I keep staring at her face for I don't know how long. And Jisyang and Amadeus is, as far as I'm aware, still hasn't moved. Unless they already ran away by now, but... Yeah. They, kind, they should still be just standing there. Watching. She's beautiful. Utterly beautiful. And we're no longer Frederick, we are Elise. It's surprising to know that Frederick is actually gifted in compassion. Without that, Jisyang's attack would have killed me. I wonder if he, she could have healed herself. I mean, she's also gifted in compassion, but I guess she's... You, you can't treat yourself if you're injured. Yeah, it would be tricky. Frederick's opinion about compassion being a lame trait is silly, but that's just his way, I guess. It doesn't mean he's a bad person. Maybe I've been misunderstanding him all this time. He chopped your fr your friend, um, no, um, hands off. I still don't think that f you could forgive him just that easily. Like, oh, well, I guess he saved your life, but still. Maybe we can be good friends after all. He seems to to deeply care about me too. Ah, oh, Frederick, hitting the smooth moves. Oh, it's Amadeus. Ah, compassion. Yep, should they have been standing there this whole time just watching. I had always wondered what the coward's real magic magical trait was. Is this why you told me not to defend against this fireball? Yes. Wasn't very courageous that fireball, was it? Uh. So, shall we resume our fight or have you had enough? You see, I'd be willing to let bygones be bygones if you were to join us. Join you? Heh, <laughs> don't make me laugh. He's going to get... Yeah, why would he want Frederick, the person who basically he despised so much, plus the aristo an aristocrat to join him? Or is, or is he just talking to Elise? Yeah, I guess he's just talking to Elise, maybe. Ah, don't worry, I meant Elise, not you, my lord. You don't want your kind in Libertad. Yeah, I get it. I'm not joining Libertad either, Amadeus. So you've told me. This is unfortunate, but well, life must go on. Finish them, Ji Xiang. Oh. Roger. Elise, please leave this to me. You should just stay back. She's not going to. Huh? That was my first time using healing magic in more than 10 years. It might not be very effective. Please. I'm feeling fine, but Frederick may be right. But how can I let him fight Jisang alone? I'll heal you while you fight. No, you must conserve your mana. We'll still need to deal with Amadeus after we're done with Jisang. But Amadeus can't... Just leave this to me, alright? Frederick looks determined. He doesn't show any hesitation. His eyes are burning with courage. Oh, so does he suddenly gain the magic? Go trick courage or not? I know. Okay. But how could Frederick stand up against Ji Xiang? Ji Xiang and Frederick face each other, about thirty feet apart. They're trying not to leak too much. Oh, there's music again. Oh damn. They're trying not to leak too much magical aura, but there's no doubt that both of them are already prepared to cast their spells. Oh, epic showdown. For a while, they only stand silently, studying each other's movement, despite the fact that neither moves. Jisyang is the first to attack. 
Shaman intelligence. Oh, water ball. I've never seen that. Ji Xiang shoots out of. Wait, water shoots out of Ji Xiang's hand, but unlike the usual torrent of jets of water that come gushing out of a magician's hand, when this spell is cast, this time the water is condensed into a ball, flying fast towards its target. Fortunately, Fadget managed to react in time. Summon! Willpower. He shields himself with a rock wall. His wall crumbles after taking the force of Ji Xiang's water ball, but Fadric seems to have expected it, because he immediately lunges forward through his crushed wall. Hmm. After covering half the distance between himself and Ji Xiang, Fadric casts his spell. I don't see how Fadric could beat Ji Xiang. I mean, like Fadric said, he's not even sure if he could fight against a. Uh, if he could beat a dragoon, and this guy. Like took out, like just push back five dragoons and could stand toe to toe with, um, Janice Wolf. So the only way I see this ending up is either Fedric lose, or something happens in the battle. Like, like, um, Janice Wolf suddenly comes in to interrupt the battle, or at least herself interrupts the battle. But Jisan gracefully leaps backward to avoid the attack. Fedric presses on and unleashes his attack again. And summon more willpower. But this time, Ji Xiang doesn't dodge backward. Instead, he moves forward. His power increases by an order of magnitude. I won't let you, dipshit. Fedric answers by focusing his own magic power. They're both ready to cast a spell. Ji Xiang, Ji Xiang casts first. Summon intelligence and nerve eye courage, so shoots ice. It's the same ice magic that earlier had almost incapacitated Fedric in freezing coldness, but this time the magic leaves Ji Xiang's hand in the form of a, of half a dozen ice shards. Fedric tries to move away, but he's too late. The ice shards are moving too fast. The shards penetrate his flesh. Oh damn! And soon after, the ice spreads and coats his skin. But Fedric refuses to go down. He grits his teeth and casts a spell. Summon courage. His own body bursts into flames, swirling engulfing fire, melting the ice, turning it into water for a second before it evaporates into the night air. Uh, don't you want to heal Frederick at least? Ji Xiang takes a few quick steps back to avoid getting incinerated in Frederick's swirling fire. They are back to observing each other's stance. Ji Xiang's aura is still as faint as before, but this time, a strong magical aura is emanating from Frederick's body. A powerful and heavy magical aura, and, a, and extremely courageous. Looks like our lord has found his courage. Oh. Yes, his fire is much stronger now. I think it could kill me. Scared? Of course, fear of death is why I never let myself kill in combat. Give up, Godwin. Although you managed to save yourself by melting my eyes, some parts of your body are frozen, aren't they? Sharp eyes you have there. Transform compassion. But they're not frozen anymore. I see you finally made peace with compassion magic. Oh, so Fedric killed himself. I wouldn't say that. You're just not the only one who would never let himself kill in combat. Interesting. For your sake, I hope neither of us have, has to be a liar after this fight. Heh. <laughs> Ji Xiang and Fedric quiet down. They are ready to fight again. Fedric attacks. Summon courage. His fire has his fire really has become much stronger. Flames blaze forth from his hand towards his enemy. Ji Xiang just narrowly avoids being cremated in the conflagration, but counters with high level magic only a moment later. Oh, but this time the ice shot seems to be stronger. Fedric dodges the ice storm while casting his next spell. Oh, wait. Oh yeah, he now he's gifted in courage. So he can create powerful thunder now, right? Yeah, lightning now. Cause willpower and courage. Before this battle, Fedric's thunderstorm would have been weak because while he was naturally gifted in willpower, his courage would have been lacking. But not now. His newfound courage has made his thunderstorm fierce. Yep. How does water counter thunder? 
the two men continue to fight. And fight. Well, I guess they just dodge each other attack and just shoot magic one after another. And fight. Heh. <laughs> Heh. You really have improved, haven't you? <sighs> but you look tired. Are you perhaps running out of mana? Ugh. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You may be right. I don't think I have much left in me. But this isn't over yet, Jishang. This next spell will crush you. Should you really announce it to your opponent? Should they aware? Or is that your plan? Fajit concentrates his mana in, two, in his two hands. Oh? I thought one of the rules in in social matches is that if you're if you're tired against your opponent, you shouldn't fo do an all-out attack because you're most likely not gonna overpower your opponent. Right? Oh well. He brings both hands in front of his face and stares at his open palms. His right hand, strengthened with willpower, glows with yellow light. Summon. His left hand burning with courage, glows with red light. Is it an explosion? Summon. Then he closes his right hand to fist. Amplify. And does the same with the left. Amplify. Oh my god. Oh wait, Meteor? The sky opens. Yes, it's freaking Meteor. Alright, yeah, that's real power and courage. What is that? A big flaming rock, about 20 feet in diameter. It's slowly making its way through a crack in the black sky. What kind of magic is this? Wait, but if it's so big, wouldn't it crush magic as well? Meteor. Meteor? I've heard stories about this magic spell. It's said to be one of the most destructive spells there is. This isn't good, Jisyang. Well, I've seen a bigger meteor than that, but no, this isn't good. We should run. Too late. Oh damn. I mean seriously, like you said, okay, you seen a bigger meteor than that, but what? You can't do anything against it? You can't even counter it? The meteor falls down fast, very fast. Onto Jihyang and Amadeus. There's no way to dodge the flaming rock. I don't think a barrier would protect them. <laughs> With a courageous roar, Jihyang holds out his open hand to the meteor as though welcoming it. The giant rock convulses, its flames dancing with brutality. Then when Jihyang roars again, amplifies summon courage. The meteor explodes in midair. It is blown into pieces, its tiny fragments flying everywhere in all directions. Amadeus uses his cloak to cover his body. Jishang can't do anything to protect himself, so he is pushed away by the force of the explosion. His skin grazed by meteor fragments. Oh damn. But the giant doesn't fall down. Even after the taking the full force of the explosion, even after being hit so close by the meteor fragments, the, div the Divi Pantheon mage is still standing. Battered and bruised, weakened and fatigued, but still standing. No. No way. <sighs> I bet he used up all his men on that attack. Urgh! Instead, Fedric is the one who falls to the ground. His enemy has drained... His energy has drained completely after causing such a powerful spell. Yep. Fedric! <sighs> Looks like we have a winner. Fedric's lying on his back, painfully gasping for breath. He doesn't have enough strength to move his limbs. But Jisang isn't in good condition either, and you can't cast magic. Right, Amadeus? And at least he's fine. As far as I'm aware. No, you haven't defeated me. I step forward and prepare myself for combat. Jisang is tired. If I can burn him with my fire, I may be able to win. At least. Run away. Fedric's voice is dry and pleading. No, I'm not going to leave you alone here. At least. Jishan, think you can handle her? I don't have much mana left, but I'm sure I can. I'll leave this to you then. For liberty, Jishan. Oh, Amadeus is leaving. For liberty, Amadeus. Farewell, Elise. 
Amadeus turns and walks away, leaving me and Ji Xiang, who are facing each other, and Frederick, who is panting on the ground. Fans. Amadeus halts his steps. For a moment, he just stands with his back turned to me. Finally, he turns around and walks back. Hmm. Catch out the bag? I never closed the bag in the first place. What? Fans? How? Yes, Frederick. I am the man formerly known as Franz Byron. I am the man you took everything from. Ugh, Franz. Franz, what happened to you? Why did you become the leader of Libertad? Didn't you fight against Libertad five years ago? It's a long story, at least. I fought Libertad back then because I was ignorant. Because I didn't know what I now know. Because I hadn't experienced life among the proletariat. You're wrong, Franz. You're confused because you lost your hands. Take off that cloak. Go back to being Franz Byron. No, that I can't do. Why? Why must you become Amadeus? How long are you going to be Amadeus? As long as I have to. As long as one social class is manipulated and oppressed by another. That isn't going to change. Ah, but it will. Soon it will. You can't change that with just your gang of criminals. I can't. Not with just Libertad, yes. Which is why the revolution will involve many more proletarians. What? Why are you planning? Amadeus. Take care of them, Jisyang. Will do. Please forgive me, Lady Elise, but now that it has come to this. Jisyang and I are both ready to fight. My chance of being Jisyang by myself is slim at best, but I must fight. This is my only shot while he's tired and almost running out of mana after fighting Frederick. No, Elise. Frederick gets up, he's out of mana. Frederick totters to his feet, his body's shaking. I can't believe he can still manage to stand. Frederick, what are you doing? Oh, 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 let me guess. They're gonna do a combo magic. Even though they're gifted in the same traits. Will um, no, Frederick can do willpower. At least can, but you know, there isn't any unique traits that at least knows that Frederick can't do. At least stand back. I'll take care of this. But you don't have any mana left. No, I do. A little. I still haven't cast my ultimate magic spell. What? <laughs> oh, please. That isn't even. What? <laughs> Meteor isn't your ultimate. Your ultimate magic spell? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Frederick doesn't seem to be in any condition to fight, but he looks determined to keep trying. He's ready to bet everything on this next spell. There's no sliver of doubt in his gaze, even though his body is ready to collapse. Frederick. I stand back behind Frederick as he once again gathers his mana. Willpower. Very strong willpower. Is it just an earthquake? I'm surprised he can still produce this much energy. Maybe he really does have an ultimate magic spell that can defeat Ji Xiang. Amazing. Such powerful magical aura. Alerted by Frederick's rising power, Ji Xiang also prepares another attack. Or is he planning to combo out of the enemy spell? Possible? The two magicians are very close to unleashing their magic. Which will be stronger? At least. Summon intelligence. Ha! Ji Xiang attacks first. A ball of water shoots out of his hand and flies towards Frederick. It may only be water, but with the volume, the density, and the speed at which it is moving, getting struck by that getting struck by that ball of water would be fatal. Thank you. Oh Frederick, don't kill yourself. At last Frederick too cast his spell. For, for everything. He, did he turn everyone to stone? I can't see what happens next. A huge stone wall is suddenly erected from the ground behind Frederick, separating me from him and the two libertines. Oh no, he, he just separated himself from you two. What? What happened? There are no sounds from the other side of the wall. Frederick? Frederick? No answer. 
I have two theories. One is he just created a wa- wall between you and Frederick. I mean, in Hell Hill and he dies. Basically, he just protects you. And the other one is he actually turned himself and Giselle to stone. No answer. Frederick? Still no answer. No, it can't end like this. It can't. No. Let me guess. You're gonna have to use compassion to heal Frederick from stone back to life. I bang on the stone wall. Frederick! But there's still no one here. Frederick? His ultimate magic spell turned out to be the stone wall. Look at this thing. It must be two feet thick. Oh? Yep. Oh, uh, so Jishang is not turned to stone. Alright. It would be really cool though if he just turned both of them to stone. Amadeus, what should I do with this wall? Lady at least is on the other side. Should I break it? No, don't waste your mana. As you wish. We're leaving, Jishang. Tell the others to leave too. Affirmative. The sound of Amadeus and Jishang's footsteps fades away fast. After the footsteps are gone, the night falls silent. My magic isn't strong enough to break this massive wall. Not knowing what else to do, I return to the factory through the underground tunnel. Couldn't you somehow get around it? Well, I guess you couldn't fly over it. The factory is a mess. It's been ravaged by the battle between the Dragoons and the Libertans. The Dragoons are wounded, though they're still fighting. Oh, even Commander Wolf is having difficulty in staving off the Libertans. Rita is still fighting Jude. Both of them look exhausted. But then the Libertans begin to fall back and leave the factory. Jude also starts making her escape after dodging Rita's magic. Elise. She starts when she catches a glimpse of me. We stare at each other for a long second before she dashes off. Wait, I'm not letting you get away. Stop, let her go. There's too many of them. We can't win this battle tonight. Besides, I don't see Amadeus anymore. Where's, where's he? Gone. Then we fail. Let's fall back and regroup. Where's the young lord? Girl, where's Lord Frederick? Elise? Let's get out of here. You're not even going to go to his body? Check? Perhaps try to bring him... Um, heal him or something? Oh well. Just dots? No, Frederick can't. Don't tell me the next scene is a funeral. Some mornings I wake up with enough energy to rock, to rock the days. Other times I dread the arrival. Today is neither, I guess. It's been a few hours since I got back from the factory, but I haven't slept a wink. Oh, I'm tired. Alright, I'm exhausted. All my muscles... My muscles are sore and my body feels heavy. But whenever I close my eyes, the memories from last night replay vividly, like scenes out of a picture book. Jishang's magic, his inhumanly powerful magic, would be recast over and over in my mind. It would strike me again and again. The memory of the pain clear and present enough to make me jump and break into a sweat. And again and again, Frederick would revive me with tears streaming down his face. As if the pain were his own. The only thing that would remain unchanging throughout the whole scene is Amadeus' calm, vengeful gaze. I wish it would have stopped there, but there's still more that I remember. Frederick's perseverance as he battled Jishang, the meteor, the exhaustion on his face after casting that spell, and seeing Jishang still standing at that, f and that final moment. Last night I didn't see Frederick's face when he erected the stone wall, but whenever I close my eyes, I now I can imagine it clearly. A bittersweet smile, a resignation to whatever came next, a satisfaction that he was able to protect me, regret in knowing what it had to in how it had to end, peace in knowing that it was the best he could do. Damn, Frederick. I don't know, he might not be dead after all, but uh Also it would be really cool like he said if his ultimate magic spell wasn't just was he actually petrified both himself and Jishang but I guess in that point why does he need to petrify himself just petrify Jishang if that spell even exists. 
But if it was for the best, Frederick, then why am I so sad? After I went back to the factory and the Libertons had all fled, one of the Dragoons reported that Frederick's body was found lying near a solid stone wall in an alley. It was much too late for revive. Oh no. He wasn't moving, there was no breathing and his heart wasn't beating. No, Frederick. I always thought that Jishang was a good person. He... He saved me when I was lost. Why did he kill Frederick? How could he? I suppose he didn't have a choice. It was a fight to the death. Frederick would have killed him if he turned his back. But was that the only way? Was there nothing else I could have done? No. This happened because of Amadeus. He was the mastermind. He orchestrated this war. Amadeus is responsible for everything. Amadeus is France. France is responsible for everything. France killed Frederick. Yeah, but Frederick did chop off his hands in the beginning. Frederick wronged France, I know, but was death a fair punishment? Franz, did you have to kill Frederick for chopping off your arms? Is this the kind of justice you hope to bring to Overture? My mind is a jumbled mess, I can't think. Even trying to make my even trying to make my head hurt. I feel sad and I want to cry, but I can't do that. I can't do even that. I feel numb. From time to time I hear Alanis calling her patience, but other than that, the morning is quiet. I don't hear Rita's cheerful and cries that brighten our Sundays. Today she's gone, preparing something for her presentation at the Conservatoire. I wonder how um Joff got when he's gonna react to this, like his son just died. Also what Yeah, what happened to Frederick's mother? I can't remember. I think they died when he was young or something, yeah. How long have I been sitting on my bed? I don't feel like doing anything. I don't want to sleep, but I don't want to get up or go outside either. All kinds of thoughts fill my head, but none of them are coherent. What am I doing? What have I done? What will I do? Now I will really wonder what happened if I chose to go with Amadeus. I don't think Alice would make up with Frederick, but then Frederick wouldn't die maybe? What would I do if I meet if I met Franz and Jisang again, what should I say to Lord Godwin? Frederick, where are you now? Heaven? Hell? Do these places exist? Did I make the right choice by not joining Libertad? Would any of these things have happened if I had joined them? Didn't I believe in Franz when he asked me to fix the piano? Why don't I trust him now? Franz is supposed to be really smart, shouldn't he know what's best for everyone? Isn't he fighting for the proletariat? Am I not one too? Shouldn't I be fighting alongside him to give the pros what they we deserve? Even Jude is in Libertad now. Jude, how I miss you. Why after so many years did we have to meet like this? Jude were all, was always ready to do anything for me. Shouldn't I do something for her now? Am I evil? An evil bourgeoisie? The more I think of our answer, the more question comes flooding in my head. It's never ending. I give up and close my eyes. Fragments of memories are being replayed in my mind one after another in no logical order. As I go through them, they make less and less sense. As I relive them, they become more and more distorted. Alice. Um, Alice, why did you kill me? I hear Frederick's toneless voice. Alice. Alice? Oh, it's Alanis. Alice, are you okay? It's almost time you went up, you went to the cafe. Cafe. Should I send someone to let Mrs. Howell know you, that you can't go today? No, Alan Alanis. Thanks, but I'm fine. I'll go now. Don't push yourself, Elise. I'm fine. Damn. But I think this is a good place to end it. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.